Namaste everyone, this is Pooja and welcome to my channel Movement Masters Physiotherapy. In today's video, we are going to talk about PC and PC's blueprint. Okay, I have been promising you guys this video since a really long time. So here it is. So if you like our content, we share new videos every Friday. So hit the bell icon down there so you will get a notification whenever there's a new video. For the next three weeks, I'll be putting up videos on PC blueprint. So who's this video for? This video is for someone who is going to give PC at any point in time of their life. So if you're planning to come to Canada, if you're in your third or final year of physiotherapy, you should watch this blueprint video so that you will have an idea of what the exam is going to be about. Especially if you are a student, it's a good time to start preparing ahead of time so you will pass the exams 100%. So in this coming video, in the next 8 to 10 minutes, we would be discussing the first two tables of the blueprint. The blueprint is 9 pages long, so let's get started. Alrighty, so this is Physical Therapy Competency Exam Blueprint for 2009. Um, blueprint 2009 this this blueprint is still in use for 2021 we're also going to use it for 2022 i'm thinking i'm not sure but for 2021 definitely we are using this blueprint this blueprint is given by capper that is canadian alliance of physiotherapy regulators ah uh, i don't know why i said it that way <laughs> but it's given by capper okay so a uh, story of how this pc blueprint came into existence in 2008 they did a complete review of the activities that were performed by the P by PTs and the conditions that were treated by PTs in Canada at that point in time. Based on that, they prepared uh, this blueprint. Based on that, we are going to prepare for the exams and we are going to pass the exam. Okay, so this blueprint is basically your syllabus. It tells you what you are going to be asked. Like it doesn't tell you exactly what you're going to be asked, but um, you know what to study, what to focus more on based on this blueprint. Okay. So, that being said, what they are looking for is they are looking to, to test your knowledge, skills and abilities that are relevant to the physiotherapy practice in Canada. So, if you are, uh, if you are an internationally educated physiotherapist like me, you would find there are certain things that are different in Canada in, uh, in terms of physiotherapy practice, in terms of consent taking, you take consents uh, and you uh, document them in a different way. Uh, you have to store your documentation for a certain amount of time. Uh, the insurance and billing can be different, you know, things like that sort of like there is social security and there is OHIP and things like that that you also need to know so there are certain things that are different from your home country but still physiotherapy is physiotherapy so this blueprint might look like it's uh, it's a lot but if you just read it in small chunks it's not too anxiety provoking so try that out uh, we end this together i don't really like going through the blueprint but it's necessary and we'll do it this is really important if you are starting uh, to prepare for your pce that you go through the blueprint once so you have an idea of what to expect in the exam and there are sample questions 50 sample questions uh, on capr's website please check that out as well so do that okay okay this is the smallest uh, table in this whole blueprint so let's get started with the smallest one so areas of practice this is what you need to focus on what is going to be asked more so you are going to focus definitely you're going to focus on your neuromusculoskeletal okay 50 percent of the exam or more 50 plus or minus 5 is going to be from neuromusculoskeletal followed by neurology followed by cardiopulmonary followed by multisystem okay and what you are going to be tested on you are going to be tested on your assessment and evaluation skills 35% uh, thirty-five percent plus or minus 5 is based on that and interpretation, planning, intervention and revaluation. That contains other 50%. Okay, So you are going to be focusing a lot on what you are going to, uh, you know, how you are going to diagnose a condition, how you are going to provide PT management, how you are going to reevaluate this patient, what sort of outcome measures you are going to see, uh, how you are going to educate the patients, things like that. And there is professional responsibilities as well, how you're going to be a good professional physiotherapist. Okay, so that's that's our blueprint in brief. Okay, focus more on your neuromusculoskeletal and also focus a lot, a lot on your uh, planning intervention and evaluation skills. Now comes our second table. So as they have said, this list is not necessarily exhaustive. If you go on CAPR's website, you will find uh, they have like 
recommended books list it's a huge list i use like five books but you could go through that list and choose which books you have and what you want to use for your reference that being said what we are going to be uh, tested upon is how are you going to prov- provide care to your client right your client care is the most important component so you are not only going to treat the condition you're also going to tell them preventive measures how to maintain the condition and how are you going to treat them if the client comes in with an acute condition as opposed to a chronic condition oa acute oa chronic okay your treatment changes drastically if it's you know chronic condition as opposed to an acute condition also you are going to be treating clients of all age groups so for clarification you don't need to be uh, you know specializing in geriatrics or pediatrics or or you know pelvic health anything like that for this all you need to do is you need to know the basics that could happen to a 5 year old uh, common conditions that you would see in a 5 year old as opposed to common conditions that you would see in a 65 year old okay so you all you need to know about torticollis and you also need to know about rheumatoid arthritis you are going to treat both male and female clients so you do need to know uh, how to treat a woman who is 6 months pregnant with low back pain you also need to know how to treat a male who has just had prostatectomy and he has urinary incontinence how are you going to treat these clients okay that then that comes to where you are going to work this changes a lot uh, of things in terms of if you are in an acute care facility you would be focusing more on client positioning might be it has a lot to do with cardiopulmonary as well also if the client has just had uh, the fracture done uh, has just gotten the knee replaced or hip replaced or has done undergone a surgery how are you going to you know ask the client to be mobile mobile on his or her bed how are you going to ask the client to check for dvt uh, things like that so acute care private practice is pretty straightforward okay private practice is when people come in to your regular opd patients right how are you going to treat clients and what sort of conditions you would be seeing in an opd uh, like you would be seeing shoulder pain neck pain back pain regular conditions right so you need to know about all these conditions how you're going to treat them how you're going to educate your clients and things like that rehab again this could uh, con- be including your uh, tkr thr and things like that community care special needs population geriatric population things like that okay i think i know it's a lot we are at the end of this table and then we are going to take a break okay so this is this is what a physiotherapist does right you treat clients in different scenario as even as your uh, as an intern physiotherapist you have worked in different places so you are going to use all that knowledge and skill and try to be a very safe physio for your client okay in canada the exam does focus a lot on logical reasoning and being safe with your patient okay it's okay if you can't do the right thing but it is not okay if you do harm to the patient might be you don't have the perfect answer or the perfect exercise but you are not going to do any harm to the patient you know make sure that the patient is safe at all times the patient doesn't lose their balance uh, there's no dvt and issues like that and that's what we do okay other than that because canada is a multicultural uh, community uh, so people from all sort of backgrounds come here so how are you going to communicate with your patients what are you going to do if your patient has does not speak english how are you going to communicate with them things like that also if there are clients with functional disabilities how are you going to communicate with them how are you going to you know manage your pt treatment and pt session with a patient who has functional disabilities also work uh, demanding work factors let's say someone says that you know i uh, i stand for 12 hours how are you going to you know modify that patient's uh, exercises what are you going to do ask them to do in their routine to sort of help with the exercises things like that so this is the basic guideline okay so we have already checked out the first two tables of the blueprint what i want you guys to do now is go down print print your capr blueprint and then you are going to mark down the things that we discussed today if you are watching this video in 2023 or 2024 i would really want you guys to go and check capr's website they do update update their blueprints and their requirements mostly every couple of years so next time we are going to check the other two tables and go into details with the capr blueprint see you till then